Hey, it's Tom from Inspiration Metalworks, and in this week's video, we're going to use Fusion 360's built-in support for two-dimensional cutters like plasma cutting and laser or water jet to improve our cut quality by controlling things like our lead-in and lead-out and how you actually get those uh, cut paths out of Fusion 360 and into your plasma cutter. I know I have done uh, some videos similar to this in the past where I've used Fusion 360 to do my design work and um, export DXF files for use in uh, my plasma cam system, which you can kind of see over there, right? Kind of back there. Um, this week, though, we're going to do things a little differently because uh, I've had some questions come up over the last few weeks and people are, have been asking about how you might do this directly with G-Code or with uh, with different kinds of plasma cutters or water jet, uh, laser cutters, things like that. Uh, so effectively, the, the only real prerequisite with this is your system needs to be able to uh, import and read G-code files, right? Um, if they can do that, it can probably go ahead and use this process that I'm going to show today. Um, even with mine, the plasma cam can read those files, but I need to do some manual work uh, after the fact. Um, the uh, it, the way that we output from Fusion, uh, the plasma cam just can't read it, right? So it knows the cut path that you want to take, but it can't control things like torch height or speed or um, you know, firing the uh, the controller. Now maybe I can do that. I'm I'm using the TorchMate post processor. Maybe I could do it differently with a different post processor. Don't know. Um, there, plasma cam uses a proprietary software called Design Edge to control all this. So. For now, I'm just doing it this way. I, it gets me what I want and what I need. Um, maybe in the future, I will you know, dig in a little deeper on that. But for right now, we're going to cover just the basics. If you happen to have a system that's you know, Mach 3 based or something like that, this should even uh, control things like uh, being able to, to fire the, the plasma cutter and, and everything else. But uh, for me, it's just going to do the, the output. So. That's enough babbling. Let's take a look at the actual uh, software and, and how this works. All right, so we are now in Fusion 360, and the first thing we need is something to actually cut. So we're just going to go simple. Let's just do a circle. And I'm not getting into what, uh, let's do a four inch circle here. I'm not getting into anything particular on the drawing itself. I'm assuming that you know how to use Fusion at least a little bit. Um, not everybody does, but. Uh, you know, we're talking about this from a slightly different perspective now. So, we've got our model here. It's a circle. Uh, it's an eighth-inch uh, plate, and you know, it's a four-inch circle. Nothing spectacular about this. What's important is as we move into the next side. So let's go to the cam part of it, and let's do our setup. So we always have to do a setup. Um, you know, it lets the system know what we're working with. In this case, we're going to be using cutting, right? So if you see the hover over, cutting is for water jet, laser, or plasma configurations. Um, I'm, I'm sure it can do other things, but that's what it's really there for. So two-dimensional cutting. Our stock, we're going to do a fixed size box, and it is, let's just say it's a 12 inch by 12 inch by 125. Right, so there it is. Here's our part. Here's our, our part in the, the layout, and we're ready to start. There's not a whole lot to this, right? I mean, this is just a simple part. So we're going to go into cutting. It's a 2D profile, right? And you'll notice we've got some information in here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our tool, and we're going to select the plasma cutter. And you notice in our, our filters, we've got the cutting tools in here. And they provide uh, some sample tools in here. Uh, you can go in and adjust this for your particular instance, but I found that the 40 thousandths kerf width of this plasma cutter tool is exactly what I need. It's what I have, right? So there it is. It, you know, cutting, we're going to do through auto, right? There's, you know, automatic, high quality, medium quality, low quality, right? This is if you've got different kinds of quality uh, tables in the machine. Um, you know, I don't have any of that. And it doesn't really matter because, frankly, we're not, I'm not using this to control uh, the, the actual plasma cutter itself. But you do have those options in there. You can change your feed rates and things like that. You don't really have to do a whole lot here. We're going to select the geometry. We want to know, you know, we're saying it's on the outside. If you were cutting it from the inside, it would you know, you flip the arrow around, right? 
You can tell it to select same, uh, same plane faces, so if you have multiple parts, it can, it can find all the parts and do all the cutting for you. Right? So it helps, you, it helps speed the process up. Right? Um, you know, we're going to start from the outside. We might always want to start on the inside. Right? So this is for your offsets. Now in this case, um, you know, it's, you know, it helps you on, on how you're doing your compensation. So in this case, we're you know, starting the outside. You might always be outside because you might always be cutting just profile, outside profiles. You might always be cutting inside profiles. You know, it's just where it starts. And that's just saying where this arrow starts. Okay? You can even add tabs in on this, right? just like any other one. You can, you can have your tabs in there. Now, we're not going to do that today, but kind of a neat uh, setup. Heights, there's not a whole lot to do here, right? Because uh, for my system, at least, it's not being controlled here, but you might want to set your uh, cut heights in here, right? So where is it going to go? Like, technically, I would actually want it at 60 thousandths uh, from, the, from the stock top, right? Uh, what kind of tolerance we're going to have, stock to leave, we're not really using anything here. This is where we're going to do things a little differently because my lead in and lead out is what I'm really interested in here. And I'll, when we go over to the plasma table, we'll look at it uh, a little more closely and you'll see why this is important. But really, I want to do a radius, right? I'm going to say, hey, don't come in perpendicular. I want to do a radius here. And I'm going to say, I want you to come in and do a, uh, let's say, a, an eighth inch radius. And I want you to lead, you know, come in from a quarter inch away. Right? Actually, let's do a quarter inch and quarter inch. So it's a nice, nice uh, smooth part in here. Um, I don't have a particular uh, place I want it to start, but if I wanted to, I could say, okay, I want you to start you know, as close as you can to here. Right? So there's my point. Click OK, and there it is. It's created our cut path. Now, from this angle, it doesn't really show you much, but let's look at it from the top view, and you'll see why this is important. Okay, so the default with Design Edge is to come straight in, come around, and go back out, right? Well, one thing that I really like about doing this infusion is it allows me to arc in and arc back out. So I'm, I'm coming in on a radius, go around, and then come back through that radius. Now what that does is it helps me eliminate this, this spot right here, oftentimes ends up with a little pip, right? It's not a clean part of the cut. And there's, you know, there's not a whole lot of, of ways to get around that, but this is one of these ways that can help minimize that. So we're going to do a quick test and see what it really looks like um, in the real world. Uh, okay, so we've got our code. There's not a whole lot to this particular one. This could have as much stuff in here as you wanted. Right now, we're just doing some basics, right? So there it is. What do we do next? Well, we need to get this into G-code. Go to your post-processing, and you've got lots of different generic post-processors in here, right? Now, um, I went to setup and chose uh, use generic posts. You know, you, this is where you could do your cloud posts or whatever else. Um, for right now, I'm using generic posts, and I am using the generic Torchmate plasma cutting post. Okay, um, nothing too spectacular here, but that's the one that I'm using. And I'm going to say post. Where do I want to put it? I'm going to put it in my G code folder, and I'm just going to call this. Plasma test one should prompt me to overwrite because I did a test earlier just on the output. And there it is, right? So you can see it sets everything up. Uh, in my case, it's gonna, my system is going to ignore all of this. You know, this is saying which tool to use, what are my work offsets. It tells me my heights here. Remember, that's my, my cut height shows up here. And then, again, you know, my feeds and speeds. Where is it going to start? Here we go, we come in, we uh, go to our start point, we're going to arc in and you know, do our cut, do our radius out, and park the, the cutter, right? Um, nothing spectacular in this particular code, but some of the drawings that I do are pretty detailed, right? So that's it. We're going to, um, let's stop fusion, and we'll go over to the plasma cutter, and we'll actually cut this twice. We'll cut it once using the, the factory design edge software, once with the G-code, and see how it looks. So let's go into the design edge software. And we'll do a new drawing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the two different um, 
the two different approaches to doing this cut. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to import our test that we did. There it is right here. Plasma test one. So let's zoom out to the whole table. We'll move that up here. And the other thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll create a circle. It's a four inch circle, just like that one. So now we've got the circle we drew in here and the cut path of the circle that we drew in there. Now what we need to do is we'll create a new cut path here and we'll go ahead and create our cut path for this particular one. And what we'll do, let's, let's zoom in to just the selection here. And we'll take a look at this. So right here, I notice, or I wanna point out that the design edge software, it brings you in perpendicular. So it starts out here, it comes in, hits that point, goes around and stops right there at that point. The way that we did this with uh, Fusion is we come in here, we come around, and then come back out. So we should get a much smoother transition at the uh, cut point, the pierce point. Um, and that, again, is the, the whole idea behind uh, doing it this way. Now, one thing that we should probably be aware of is, you know, we've got our curve width. You can kind of see, actually, if I zoom in a little bit, you can see. So Design Edge is putting the curve width in here for me, whereas we've already got the curve width in the, uh, 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 in the post processor from, from Fusion. So we don't have to worry about that part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and we will just do, let's choose our two points here and we'll do a, a cut preview just so you can get a feel for what it's going to do. And we press start. It's going to come in. Oh, that's a little fast. Let's, let's bring our speeds down to something realistic. So this is about what it's really going to look like, right? Our rapids are about 600 like that. Okay. So let's do it again. So you see it comes in, it goes around and when we cut this for real, I mean, this is about how fast it's going to cut, right? But you can see a much smoother transition here and here and a very abrupt transition here. So let's take a look at our two, our two circles. Now, at first glance, they both look identical, right? Everything looks fine. Um, but let's do a couple of things and I, I haven't measured this yet. So I could be really embarrassed. Here's the one that design edge did. Now, keeping in mind that I have taken time to uh, dial in the, the system pretty well, but it's not perfect. So we get the calipers out here. It's supposed to be four inches. I'm at four inch 13, right? So, I mean, frankly, 13 thousandths, not terrible. The, uh, the cut from the uh oops. whoa sorry and here we're at whoops three inch nine sixty five sixty two this is i'm not doing the best job at measuring this right now but i think you guys get the idea three inch nine seventy so i'm a little under i'd need to uh to dial that in a little bit better uh, but it gives you an idea of, of that part of it. But let's talk about the quality, right? And the real reason why we do this. So every time I use Design Edge and it does that lead in, I get, let's see if you can, how well you can see it. You guys see this, this little pip right here? Right. So really there, you can really start to see it there. It's bad, right? So you get this divot. You get a divot in there where, where the cutter comes in, right? We don't want that. But then again, and I didn't do my lead in and lead out all that great, but the way that I did it on this one, you don't, let's see if you will focus on that part there. You don't get it, right? It's just a cut. Can't get it to focus. Maybe. There we go. You can kind of see a little bit. There's some leftover dross there. I could dial that in a little bit better. But basically, I get a much cleaner cut. Um, this isn't the best example. I probably used, should have used something a little thicker. Uh, this is actually 14 gauge and I just blew through it fast. So 
Um, but that's the other part is, you know, 260 inches a minute. And getting quality like that on those edges, being able to control that kind of thing. Uh, it's a good reason to use uh, use something like Fusion 360 as opposed to using the built-in tools. So it really gives you a lot more um, a lot more uh, control over the system. With that, I think let's call this one a wrap. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, you can see I'm using different uh, audio this time around. Hopefully that helps a little bit, and we'll see how that's going. The other thing to note uh, for those of you who did watch the live stream from Stan's. Hey, guess what? We got some fancy new roadie uh, uh, microphone stuff in here for the, the camera. Just came in. Don't have a battery for it yet or I would have used it today. But we got some new stuff coming in. Uh, hopefully it should make the videos a whole lot better, uh, a whole lot cleaner, better audio. And then everything we do during the year, all of that gets translated into how it looks at the bash so there we go that's your, your update on that again thanks for watching and i'll see you again soon